I grew up in a polygamous family and I grew up seeing my parents' attitudes towards life and the outcome they all got. While my stepmother, mother and father were all poor, my mother seemed always to have better financial growth than the other two people. One reason for this is that my mother is a great saver. I don't know anyone who can keep money better than her and that made her life better. I don't know how many things I learned from her, but I most likely learned how to save money from my mother. Except for one thing, I don't save the way my mother saved her money. You see, my mother saved to achieve some of the things that society thinks is the definition of success. For example, she had to save several years to build her own house, because in the culture where I grew up, having a home of your own is a significant achievement. While I don't have anything against having your own home, I won't save for 10 years, not even 5 years, or take a mortgage to have a home. Instead, as you will notice in this video, I save to invest or save in investment. Let me explain what I mean by that. When I said I saved $30,000, most people might assume that I have such an amount tucked up somewhere. Well, that's what the traditional saving mentality teaches us save a lot of money for retirement or something and keep it safe in the bank. The problem with this thinking is that most times the money you save in the bank is reducing in value every day due to inflation. Why would I keep my money in the bank when I know that its real value diminishes every minute? I don't keep my money in the bank. I channel it into investment. This way I don't only have money saved I have it working for me as a servant, so I can use the money I have to make more money. Most of us have read The Richest Man in Babylon. While the first principle is pay yourself first, which essentially means that you should save a percentage out of your income, you will never become rich by saving money in the bank. You only become wealthy if you understand how not to save, but to make your money a servant who works day and night to make you more money. I try to combine the advice in The Richest Man in Babylon by not just saving, but by saving my money where it works for more money. Having said this, someone watching this video might want to ask, what do you think I can save my money in as I save it? Very simple. If you own a business, invest all your money in your business. By far, your business is the best place to save your money because by putting all your money back to your business, you're not only saving your money, you're saving your money where it will work like crazy for you. Your own business, not those big companies, is the best place you can ever invest your money. Take for instance someone might be proud of buying Amazon or Google shares. Well, Amazon is a trillion dollar or so company, and how big do you think Amazon can become in the next five years? Can Amazon become a $5 trillion company in the next five years? Not likely. But your own company can grow in tenfold in the next few years. I hope you get what I'm saying here. I don't speak against investing in big companies, but I'm convinced that if you own a small business, your business is the best place to keep and multiply your money. Now, if you don't own a business, then you have to invest in something else you are passionate about. I know you hate to hear this, but there is no shortcut to multiplying your money. Again, as we learnt in The Richest Man in Babylon, you must seek to multiply the money you're saving only on ventures you understand very deeply. There's no way you can ever know what you have not taken tens of hours studying, and how can you study what you don't have a passion for? I don't invest in cryptocurrency, not because I don't think it makes good sense, but because I don't understand it. I don't invest in Forex because I don't have enough passion for studying Forex for 100 hours. Now that I've made myself clear that I'm not asking you to save money simply because you want to buy a new car or a new wristwatch, and now that I've tried to explain that the only reason why you should save money is to multiply it, let me share with you a few tips that helped me to save and invest so much money. 1. Don't look at the amount you earn. By far the number one reason why most people don't save or reinvest their money is that they believe they don't have or make enough money. 
The problem about thinking in this way is that you'll never get to the point where you feel like you're making enough money. Don't you believe me? Well, if your annual income is $25,000 today and you think you don't make enough money, when your income becomes $100,000, you have the same feeling because human needs grow naturally with our income. I've spent my entire adult life saving and investing, and even when I made a ridiculously small amount, I looked for ways to turn a percentage back to business or buy books and training that can help me become smarter. Because saving and investing has been my habit, when I make more money, I don't have to think about saving or investing, since it has become a habit, and that's what you should do. You should build or invest, make it a habit, no matter how small you earn. Make it your duty to invest some amount every month, no matter how small. Some of the little and highly rewarding investments are buying good books, attending a good seminar or conferences, traveling to spend a weekend with a mentor or positive thinking friends, moving to a new location with the hope of understanding some wonderful opportunities, etc. 2. Focus on increasing your means. There are two types of warfare strategies, offensive and defensive. There are two types of people when it comes to money. People who want to live within their means and people who want to increase their means. While I try as much as I can not to live a materialistic lifestyle, I don't plan my future living within my means. If I deny myself what I want, I see it as a temporary step to a better future. I focus my energy on how to increase my means, and this is how you can do the same. First, stop attaching negativity with money. You see, it's common that someone will watch our videos on this channel and drop a comment about Jesus on the video. Such people assume that for us to be talking about money, we don't know God. I'm sorry, but you're blind if you think like that. By God's grace, I'm a born-again follower of Jesus. I talk a lot about money because I don't want to be a hypocrite like many people. If you wake up every day to work as a slave for money and you're pretending that money isn't necessary, or you think that the God you're following doesn't want you to know or have money, you're not telling yourself the truth. The process of expanding your means starts by telling yourself the truth. And the truth is that you need a lot of money to live in a modern world. You don't have to be satanic to make money. The first truth will lead you to the second, and that is get a financial education. Someone once challenged me that I'm doing evil because I criticized school. I didn't reply him, but I thought about it. How can we train people about every vital thing but money? Why should I send my children to school to learn how to be lawyers, doctors or accountants if they won't understand the most important paper in the world? Do I mean that it's stupid to study law or medicine? Well, I would have died if some people didn't study medicine, and I wouldn't be useful if I can't call a lawyer to know the right things to do to be saved from the sword of the law. What I'm saying, in essence, is that we can't teach a child how to drink water when we haven't taught her how to eat. 3. Don't live the social media dream In my country, when people start making more money, they change the environment where they live. When they get to the wealthier neighborhood, they find out that people use better cars, better types of furniture and better wristwatches. They have to change all that too. So they remain as poor as they were before they started earning more money. I resisted that stupidity and that's the reason I'm writing the script for this video from one of the most impoverished areas of the city I live in. I see people who don't make half of the money I make in the exclusive part of my city, driving what they consider a nice car and living large. That's what I call living for social media. You don't want to live for social media or people. You want to live for your future. Do you ever imagine a future where you no longer have to work because you need money? I look at such a future and I want to get there as fast as possible. So I can't afford to live a luxurious life today because I want my social media friends to envy me. This is the summary of this video. 
First, I don't save money to make my bank rich. I don't save money. I keep money where it can work to make me more money. I don't have thirty thousand dollars sitting in my bank account. I keep it in the prison of hard labor, where it is working tirelessly to make me more money. Second, saving is what everyone can and should do because it's not about the quantity of the money you save, but the habit of saving. Third, don't focus on living within your means forever. Only live within your means for a few years while you're working hard to expand your means. Fourth, don't raise your standard of living because you have a 10% increase in your income. Don't go and live in a luxurious part of your city or buy a new car because you now make more money. Always imagine a future where you won't have to wake up to work for money. Pursue that future by sacrificing today's pleasures. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe.